Welcome back to another video guys where today you join me once again tinkering on my Audi RS3. Now if you watched the last video you would have seen we installed the integrated engineering carbon fiber intake into the engine bay and a carbon fiber engine cover and a fuse box cover as well. But today we are going to be looking at the interior of the RS3. Now I don't make any excuses that I'm a big fan of OEM style interiors. I don't like mucking around with them too much. But there's a few things in here that just cheapen the look of the RS3 that need to be upgraded a little bit. So today we're going to be looking at some shift paddles because the ones that are in there are kind of plasticky and, and not that fancy. And the other thing is the seat backs of the front seats, which are basically like a plastic cover. Now a lot of the guys go for the carbon fiber option on those, but I've opted to go for something a little bit different. So. Let's get this car into the middle of the garage and then we can start working on some interior upgrades. If you're new to the channel, my name's Alex and if this is the kind of stuff you enjoy seeing, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. So we need to get this car into the middle of the garage so that we can work on it, which means you get to listen to an RMS3 cold start. back seat of my RS3. I don't think I've ever actually sat in here. It's not that roomy. Anyway, uh, this is what we need to tackle today and you'll have to excuse the lighting but basically this plastic section here all the way right down to the bottom needs to come off. Now I've done a bit of googling and apparently these uh, sections here sort of fold in um, and then there's some clips in the middle. There's a couple of clips here which just pull out and then the bottom there's a couple of hooks. So as best I can I'm going to try and show you how to remove the seat backs of an RS3. All right so here we go. Now apparently these top sections just fold out. I think what might work here is a trim removal tool. Oh, that sounded good. All right, change of plan. We're gonna try and pop these out first. That's one, that's two. Oh, there's another one. That's four, we're getting there. I think now it actually just lifts up, so give it a wriggle. Okay, oh, that's one side. Oh, hey, there we go. That actually wasn't too bad. So now with the seat back removed, you can actually see more clearly where the uh, hook points are. So there's one at the top here, and this kind of just folds around the top. Uh, you got another couple just here and where were the others so the bottom rail uh, excuse the lighting is actually just down there and the other hooks kind of just hook around the edge of this frame here so that's that one done that will make the uh, getting the second one out a lot easier so let me just show you what the actual back of the uh, cover looks like I've got good news and I've got bad news the good news is we got it out <laughs> obviously and you can see the hooks up here here there's a couple more there and there and then you've got the big loops at the bottom. So that's all great. So we can take that off to the trimmers now. Bad news is this guy here. So this netting. Now obviously if we're going to be doing some work to the back of this, um, we need to get rid of this. And I've just looked at the back and it seems to be kind of plastic welded in. So I'm thinking we probably need to drill these out maybe and just run without a net on the back I'm not sure I'll give it a bit more thought whilst I remove the second one now I've given it some thought no one ever uses these do we really need it I don't think so so what I'm going to try and do I've got an assortment of tools here to give it a go 
uh, to try and best remove these little plastic welds around here and hopefully that frame will just lift off and we can get rid of it. And speaking of what we're actually doing to them, instead of going carbon fiber, I've thought why not go a bit of Alcantara to match all the Alcantara that's already in the interior. So we're going to get these wrapped in the same Alcantara that the interior is. So it's on the steering wheel, it's on the gear shift, it's on the door cards. And that way it'll all tie in really nicely. But we'll get rid of that kind of plastic look. And we'll just sort of uh, richen the, uh, the look of the interior a little bit. But right now I need to get these plastic melted plugs out of here. So let's give it a shot. <laughs> All right, I've been trying a few different uh, techniques. I kind of started off with um, some wire cutters. I thought maybe we could get underneath the plastic plugs and sort of uh, cut them, cut the top off them. It works okay, but what I've actually found is that the Stanley knife is the way to go. So you can get the blade right underneath, kind of flick it up, um, and that will break the top of the plug. Word of caution though, um, when you do break the top of the plug it's quite brittle plastic and they do fly out so make sure you wear your safety glasses i'm going to get mine now all right safety glasses they are not but they will definitely do the job so let me show you what i'm doing okay so you can see that i've kind of done this one here already you can see that the perimeter of the plug has been um like snapped away so that should just fall straight through once we got all of them out so basically all you need to do is get and this is a bit tricky with one hand Get your blade underneath there and just kind of work around it and snap all the little bits off until you've got no border around it. Well, I think I'm going to eat my words here. I've just told you to use the Stanley knife as the best method, but um, having worked around it, I'm going to go back and say, go for these guys. Pop them into the top of the hole, snap them on both sides, and the rest of the plug just kind of drops out. Okay, all the plastic plugs on the back have been um, severed, so I'm hoping this just, hey, look at that off okay and this is what we're left with so I'll have a talk to the trimmer and see if either they can fill these before they trim it or we just trim it and then we figure out a way to put this back in place now I need to move on to that one Alright, that's the hard part done. Now it's time to get these down to the motor trimmers. Well, if it seems like we're on a time crunch, we are. We're about an hour late getting to the motor trimmers. Who knew it took so long to make YouTube videos? Anyway, I just wanted to talk quickly about Alcantara itself. Obviously, it's a premium product and you, you get for what you pay for. Um, so make sure you shop around. I've had prices range from $1,200 to do the seat backs in Alcantara right down to $600. So I've chosen a local supplier close to my house here in Perth and uh, he's going to do it for $600 plus taxes. So hopefully, fingers crossed, he does a good job. But yeah, let's go drop these off at the motor trimmers. <laughs> So that's the seat backs dropped off at the motor trimmers. Now, whilst they're doing those, we can move on to the next part of today's job, which is attaching some new paddle shifters. So let's go check them out. The paddle shifters on the Audi RS3 are they're garbage. They're very plasticky, really light. They're not really nice to use and they don't kind of go with the flow of the quality of the car. So I've been looking for a while for something to change them out with. Now on the market you can get a lot of paddle shift extensions, ones that stick on the back, ones that kind of clip on with little grub screws, but none of those really tickled my fancy. So I've been looking for something to actually replace the paddle shifters with. Uh, there are a few companies out there that do replacements. Um, a lot of them are in carbon fiber. The price is 
extraordinary. Um, so if you like those, go for it. But I did come across this company called DS Performance. Um, they're based out of Germany and they make these little beauties. These are actually Lamborghini Urus paddle shifters. Um, now, Lamborghini obviously being part of Audi and VW, um, they're all in the family. So I don't think these are modified that much from the original ones. So these ones here are in a matte finish. They do come in a gloss as well. Um, and they're definitely got a bit of weight to them. You know, they're sort of an, an alloy um, piece. Very nice finish. Very subtle, nothing too layerish. You've got the little plus and minus symbols at the top. So we are gonna go ahead and install these to replace the crappy Audi RS3 paddle shifters. In terms of instructions on how to install these, if you go to their Instagram page, there's actually a video that tells you how to do it. The only problem is it's all in German, but um, fortunately I can sprechen a little bit of Deutsch. Uh, and also, you know, just if you're watching it, it kind of is easy to follow in terms of visuals. So the first thing that we need to do is disconnect the battery because we're dealing with an airbag that we need to remove. And so we don't want any explosions of airbags inside the cabin. So we'll do that first. For those of you playing at home, yes, the battery is in the boot. Um, just make sure that you take the negative uh, terminal off and then the car will be de-energized or, or whatever you want to call it. Just double check that by hitting the, the start stop button and yeah, nothing should happen. So now there's no risk of the airbag deploying whilst we're working on it. The next thing you want to do is get the steering wheel into the um, three o'clock, nine o'clock position because there are two holes one on the top here and one on the bottom. So I guess we're gonna to have to rotate it at some point that you need to use a flathead screwdriver to release this section of the airbag. You need to insert this, push it towards the center of the steering wheel and it should unclick this side of the airbag. One. Rotate the wheel to the other side. It's really tricky to find the little spring. And you actually need a surprising amount of brute force to do this. Every time I get one side, the other side pops back in. This is so frustrating. They make it look so easy in the videos. One eternity later. Oh. Yes, finally. I've been at that for about an hour and a half, but that was an absolute struggle. I ended up taking the cowling off the steering column just so I had a bit more access to get to it. So we just need to dislodge this little guy at the top here. And you do that by pulling out on the little white tab that comes out and then you can pull it off down there but I just want to take a second to show you what was causing so much trouble to start with these springs here are what is on uh, the back of those holes on the back of the steering wheel and so when you put your screwdriver in you're essentially going right into there and what you want to do is move that spring that way right and then that releases tension um, in these little sections here. So one there, one there, and then on the other side, there and there. And these sections is actually what's holding the airbag in place. So for your own reference, if you want to try this at home, this is what it looks like on the inside. So you don't have to guess and spend an hour and a half trying to do it like I did. All right, with all of that apart, finally, we can start working on getting the trim off the steering wheel. So we want to get behind these sections here where the buttons are located. That is where the paddle shifters are attached to. First of all, be very careful when you do this. Obviously, when this all comes out, there's a wire that connects the buttons to the actual steering wheel. If you yank it out too hard, 
then you're going to snap that wire and that's going to be expensive. So always be really, really careful when you're doing this kind of stuff. But we're gently going to work from the top here and just release the trim little by little. All right. It's proving to be a little bit difficult to get this trim out, so things have gotten serious. I've got the gloves on, uh, just to give a bit more grip. Uh, I'm getting sweaty hands and I've got a few blisters already. So, onwards and upwards. We have made progress. Don't let anyone tell you it's really easy. It's, um, it's really, really stuck in there and, and you're gonna get a lot of blisters and stuff trying to get it out but we have now loosened up the trim and so now we can lift that up being careful not to pull those wires too hard and they're actually held in with little plastic hooks and then release the little plug from the back of the controls nearly there boys oh my god the center trim is out so we'll put that aside so that we can get now to the paddle shift mechanism so this is what it looks like once you've got that whole trim out of here. These little guys here, these little hex bolts, that's what you want to remove. And once you've undone that, you can see here this little plastic hook. So that means that the um, paddle shifter mechanism is held in place um, and it's been pushed in that way. So to remove it, we're going to have to pull it back and then a little bit towards the outside as well. Same on this side here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, my apologies, they're actually not hex bolts. They are a T20 Torx bit. So now we should be able to pull these out and to the outside. Voila! All right, here we go. Both paddle shifters out. So this is what you need because you're gonna remove this little um, mechanism from the front of the paddles and then attach the Lamborghini Urus paddles to the back of that. Okay, from here on in, it starts getting a bit simpler, I hope. So what we need to do with these, you can see here there's a, a little pin that runs all the way through from one side to the other, and that secures this mechanism onto the actual paddle shifter. So we need to find something really, really thin to push that out with. So we'll give that a shot now. Okay, you can see that's popped out. And just use a pair of pliers and pull it out. And then that will separate out from there. From here, it's just a matter of lining up your new paddle shifter, putting that in place. And it's just a matter of pushing the pin in. And there we go. One paddle shifter in place. That looks really good. All right, time to do the other side. With the new paddle shifters installed onto the, the switching mechanism, it's time to put them back in the car, which is basically the reverse of everything that we've just done so far. And I know it'll be a lot easier putting it back together than it was taking it apart. Remember to tuck the wires back behind their little hooks uh, for the actual controllers. All right, now it's time to push this bugger back in. Yeah, Alex, John from John's Night Trimmers, how you going? Good, how are you? Yeah, good. We've just done your panels. Um, I'll be there before then. Okay then. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Bye. So there we go, guys. That is the Lamborghini Urus paddle shifter replacement install on the Audi RS3. And because they are replacements, you don't have that issue where if you pull the top of the lever, sometimes it doesn't translate to actually switching gears because these are actually part of the mechanism now you can pull them from the top from the bottom um, any any kind of where and they'll change gears for you
Personally, I think they also look a bit better. They definitely feel a lot better because they're an alloy, they're not plastic. I'll do some glamour shots a bit later, but we need to dash off to the motor trimmers to get the seat backs. So, slight hiccup. I've just started the car up and the dashboard has lit up in a Christmas tree. I've got like stabilization control fault, hill hold assist unavailable, steering fault, distance warning currently unavailable, Audi pre-sense restricted. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Gonna drive it and gonna risk it and uh, go and get those seat bags. Uh, if it still doesn't clear by the time I get back, obviously we're gonna have to take a trip to the mechanic and it might need a reset or whatever. Freaking stress me out all those error lies, but um, I did the old stop start and all the errors are gone. In other news, the paddle shifters do work. And they look oh so good. Going to go collect these um, seat packs. I'll check in with you guys once I've got them and we're back home. All right, so we're back from the trimmers, but just as a quick point of note, those shift paddles feel amazing to use. They got a real weight to them. They're like real beefy to use and you can sort of get this audible clunk when you use them. But what I want to show you right now is the seat backs that have come back from the trimmers, fully covered in Alcantara. And actually the trimmer made a call on this and decided not to put the mat pockets back in place. He said it just looked much cleaner without it. And I tend to agree. Take a look. I am super excited to get these installed, so let's get to it. Well, it's been a very productive day. That's everything installed. We've got the Alcantara seat backs and we've got the Lamborghini Aurus paddle shifters. Now it's time for the glamour shots. Hey guys, that brings to a close another video. I hope you enjoyed watching me install the Lamborghini Urus shift paddles and getting the backs of the front seats covered in Alcantara. I think it really classes up the interior and the shift paddles do feel amazing. I'll link a whole bunch of info in the description below, but if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you like the video, obviously give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing because we've got more stuff coming up very soon. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that there's going to be some forged carbon accessories for the exterior of the car. So I can't wait for that and I look forward to seeing you there. See you then.